Hey, welcome back to Bed Squared. In this video, we're going to be solving equations of the form x squared is equal to k. Here's a few examples that you can see here. We're going to try to solve some of these now. So let's go ahead and check this out. Consider the equation x squared is equal to 2. So if x is equal to the square root of 2, then x squared is going to be equal to 2. Let's have a look at that. So we've got the root of 2 times the root of 2, because remember, Square just means multiply it by itself. So root 2 times root 2 is equal to 2. Okay, And we could also have where x is equal to negative the square root of 2. Because then we would have x squared is equal to brackets minus the root of 2 brackets all squared. So what does that look like? That looks like this, which is negative root 2 times negative root 2, which also equals to the value of 2. So the solution to x squared is equal to 2 are both x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. Therefore, when x squared is equal to k, then the following must be true. x is equal to plus or minus the square root of k if k is greater than 0. And x is equal to 0 if k is equal to 0. And finally, there are no row solutions if k is less than 0. So let's do a few examples to see what this looks like. We're going to solve these two equations. x squared plus 3 is equal to 6, and 3 minus 2x squared is equal to 7. So let's start off with the first one. If we subtract 3 from both sides, then we end up getting x squared is equal to 3, because this cancels out here. And then for us to get rid of the square, we need to square root the opposite side. So we're going to say x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. Now we could go ahead and solve that as well. We can say, hey, the square root of 3 is equal to 1.73205 and so on. So we would get positive and negative 1.73205. Or it's better to just keep it as a third uh, and say x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. OK, let's do the next one. So here what we can do is we can subtract 3 from both sides. That's going to cancel out that 3 there. We end up getting minus 2x squared is equal to 4. And then if we were to divide this by minus 2 and minus 2, we would get x squared is equal to negative 2. We notice that there's no row solutions because x squared cannot be less than 0. Consider what we would have done here. We would have taken the square and we would have square rooted. Now you can't get a square root of a negative value. You'd have got plus and minus the square root of minus 2. Let's try doing that on a calculator to see what we get, okay? So the square root of minus 2. Question mark. What, what do you want to do to complete this, uh, this statement? The square root of minus 2 doesn't work. You don't get an answer for it, okay? There is no uh, square root of a negative number. Well, not unless we use imaginary solutions. Okay, so let's move on then. Let's look at another, another example. In principle, then, we can extend to other perfect squares. For example, if x minus 1 all squared is equal to k, where k is greater than 0, then x minus 1 would be equal to plus or minus the square root of k. We can therefore solve equations of the form x plus or minus a all squared is equal to k without having to expand the left-hand side. Let's have a look at an example. x minus 2 all squared is equal to 25. So we don't have to expand the left-hand side. I wouldn't need to take this and then expand it. What do I mean by expanding? Well, this square means I would have x minus 2 bracket and then x minus 2. You multiply it by itself. And then I would go ahead and I would expand all of this to see what, what I would have on the left-hand side. But I don't need to do that, okay? What I can do instead is the inverse, the opposite of square is to square root something. So I can square root the right-hand side instead. So what I would get is I would get x minus 2 is equal to, remember, it's plus or minus the square root of 25. So the square root of 25 is 5. Remember, it's plus or minus 5. And then if we plus the 2 on this side, plus the 2 on this side, that's going to cancel out. We end up getting x is equal to 2 plus or minus 5. Now, there's two solutions to that. We can either say 2 plus 5, which is 7, or we can say 2 minus 5, which is negative 3. OK, let's look at another example. We have x plus 1 all squared is equal to 7. Remember, we don't need to expand using the square. Instead, we can use the square root on the right-hand side. So we're going to get x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 7. And then if we minus the 1 on both sides, that cancels out. We end up getting x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of 7. 
Now, if you want, you can go and do this here. One plus the square root of seven will give you a solution of 3.64 and so on. Or you could have one minus the square root of seven, which will give you a value of negative 1.64575 and so on and so on. So they're the two solutions that we can have. Make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell for all future videos and check out these videos that will help you amplify your math skills. As always, I'll see you in the next one.